<laughs> Man, do I love science. Or was that magic? Hey, it's Jay here from Plasma Channel. And I'm Nate from Keystone Science. What you just witnessed was the creation of musical tone through movement. Using nothing more than a homemade plasma globe and a radio. How wicked is that? Let's head over to Keystone Science for an explanation of how this works and how to do it yourself. So probably the first thing we can do to understand how this data is being transferred from the plasma globe to the radio is look at how it's happening on an oscilloscope. And so first off, note that here on my oscilloscope you can see a wave pattern. And in fact, when I bring this closer, you can see the amplitude of the wave rises. That's because this plasma ball is actually emitting an electromagnetic frequency that's then being picked up by the oscilloscope. And in fact, we could even see what frequency that is if I count the divisions. But more so, what I want to show you guys is, watch when I touch the plasma ball, what happens. As you can see, the frequency changes very slightly. And that slight change in frequency is what we're hearing come through the radio. Now the reason for this is something called resonance. And when we touch it, we're in fact changing its resonant frequency. However, before we talk about resonant frequency and how you're affecting it, we should probably talk about capacitance. So capacitance is a force between two electrical plates. Now the formula for capacitance is going to equal epsilon times area divided by distance. Now epsilon represents the thing called the dielectric. The dielectric is going to be a constant that varies from substance to substance that you're using that goes in between the two metal plates. The dielectric in this case is the air between my hand and the plasma globe. And both those things also act as the equivalent of the two metal plates. So speaking of metal plates, if I have one metal plate here and a second one right here, and I attach each of them up to a voltage source, what's going to happen is that the positive side is going to get more and more positively charged, while the negative side is going to get more and more negatively charged. Now as for understanding the inductance part of the resonant frequency equation, we need to simply think of an electromagnet. As we put electricity into something like a wire wrapped around a nail, it builds up a magnetic field. But what happens when we disconnect the power? And the answer is the magnetic field collapses back on in, then creates a current of electricity. So, when we have something like a capacitor hooked in series with this electromagnet, aka inductor, we have them dumping the charge back and forth between each other, creating that frequency. And so now we can go ahead and relate the capacitance back into the formula for resonance frequency, which is resonance frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of inductance times capacitance, which now we can write in formulation to this as 1 over 2 pi times the square root of inductance times the dielectric times the area divided by the distance. And that is going to give us the new resonant frequency that we're creating. These are actually really important concepts, so let's talk about how they relate to the plasma ball. Well, the circuit for the plasma ball is going to be something like this. Notice that we have a coil here. Coils have specific inductances. And so on the primary side going in, we have a frequency going in that's resonating well with this coil, and thus inducing a frequency onto the secondary coil, which steps it up to the higher voltage. But, what happens is that when this arcs to our hand, what's happening is that it goes through basically a capacitance, which is formed by our body from the end of this coil, over and going back to ground. And so this new capacitance that we're adding into the system is forming a pseudo-resonance between the coil and the capacitor that's then causing a disruptive effect onto the frequency going in in the first place, thus changing it very slightly. And so then from that point, just like the waves we saw in the oscilloscope, it's going to retransmit that new frequency through electromagnetism, which then, using a speaker, you can pick up onto an antenna, and then it will remodulate it back down, and you can listen to the frequency given off. And so it's amazing how this pretty magical effect can be described by just a few science concepts. As for how to do this for yourself, you'll need a plasma ball, which you can either buy from the store or make it for yourself. I've shown a video on how to make one if you want to go watch that to make one. It's really quite simple. It's just using an ignition coil and then a simple oscillator. And then, of course, you'll just need to get a radio, preferably an AM radio. However, it could probably work with some frequencies of FM as well. And then just tune it into what sounds best, and you're all set, just like you saw on the Plasma channel. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All of this helps to explain why the Plasma Globe only breaks out when my hand is close enough. It all has to do with capacitance. The closer my hand is to the globe, the more capacitance we've got, and the more current draw there is. Thanks for stopping by, and make sure to check out both Plasma Channel and Keystone Science. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more. You stay classy.